more delightful than a summer stroll through an English country garden? Well, this one here in Annick, Northumberland, is a garden with a difference. It has some really unusual features, including its very own poison garden, containing over a hundred species of plants that have the potential to kill you. The Poison Garden is locked off from the general public by these rather large iron foreboding gates. And once you're inside, you can't touch, smell, or even come too close to some of the most dangerous plants. And you can only go inside as part of a special tour, but today, the head gardener, Trevor, is going to show me around. So Trevor, everything in this garden could kill me. One way or the other, yes. Are there any rules for being in this garden? Is there anything I need to know? Well, yeah, before you actually come into the garden, we tell people not to touch the plants, okay. not to stand too close to them, not to smell them, <laughs> and definitely not to taste them, because they all have the ability to kill you or harm you really badly. One of the most deadliest is rice and communis. And that is this one here, the one with the red sort of... with the red, funky flowers and these beautiful palmate leaves. This is a, a very common plant, but it produces a bean. Mm -hmm. And within that bean, there's a toxin. And from that, we can extract ricin, the deadliest poison known to man. Ricin? Ricin. And how much ricin would you have to Just absorb? a really small amount. Yeah. Has to be injected into your system. You might remember Giorgio Markov. A pointed umbrella tip was shoved into his leg. And within that tip, there was a little bit of ricin. And that was enough to kill him. Well, here's a little stab at the back of the leg. Yep. OK, what else? What else do we have? We've got a trope of belladonna, which okay. is across here. Yes, let's get the <coughs> next one. So a trope of belladonna is a UK plant. So you find it in woodlands, in hedgerows. But three of these black, shiny berries are enough to kill a child. They look so tempting good. and tasty. They look very, very juicy. Yeah. And you can imagine children who now don't get out into the environment they're growing up in won't know what this is. So as a child, you see nice, juicy fruit, a bit like a grape, mm. pop it in your mouth, but three are enough to kill you. A trope of belladonna. Belladonna, Italian for beautiful lady, because Venetian ladies used to collect the berries, crush them up, yeah. get the juice, and then drop the juice into their eyes. That would make their pupils dilate, which they felt was attractive to suitors. OK, but what does that do to your eye in the long That Doesn't can't be do good. it an awful lot of good, no, because eventually you go blind. Right, OK, so the price you pay for beauty. Indeed. When I first heard about the Poison Garden, I just assumed it was going to be something inside a greenhouse because I just assume that poisonous plants can't possibly grow in my own country. They're something that belong in tropical, hot, different climates. Yeah. But actually, it looks like a British yeah. or English garden. It, it is, and most of the plants that you'll see in the Poison Garden, they're plants that you might find in your own garden. I mean, one of the most common examples, say, is laurel. Everybody in Britain has laurel hedges, but We've had people coming through the garden saying they've cut their laurel bushes down, they've left the clippings in their car on a hot summer's day, they've driven to a dump and their windows have maybe been closed and they've had crashes and it, it's asphyxiated them. I guess by focusing on the kill rather than the cure, you're giving a platform for some really interesting, memorable stories. What really interests me too is these plants don't kill without human intervention. You have to want somebody dead and know how to distill that plant mm. and whether you use the roots or the leaves or the fruits of it to kill someone. This is aconitum. Mm -hmm. This is a really common plant. But the whole of the plant is poisonous. And in fact, just 10 years ago, there was a woman called Lakvinda Singh who'd fallen out with her lover. He'd kicked <laughs> her out of the house. And so she went and collected seed of aconitum. She yeah. crushed it up, went back into the house and popped it into his curry. He ate his curry and died within 36 hours. So very dangerous plant, but very, very common. This is another very familiar looking flower. I'm pretty sure my mum has this in the garden. It's a very common plant, but it's Brogmansia, or what used to be called Datura. So the whole of the plant is toxic, very poisonous. In fact, the pollen used to be tapped into drinks. Even now, prostitutes in Paris are known to use the pollen. So when their client comes in, they will have some pollen in a drink. They'll hand him the drink. It makes you go very sleepy. So the client will then start to drift off a little bit uh, and then start to hallucinate. So, during the night, he'll have fantastic dreams about having wild experiences with this woman. And yet in the morning when he wakes up, he'll part with his money, yet he's never laid a finger on her. Ruta, again, is a really common plant, but it's phototoxic, which means that if you brush against it and get any sap on your skin, you'll start to 
get blisters forming. So all I would have to do would be to simply brush this with my hand and that's it, third degree burns. That's right, yeah, especially on a hot sunny day because it's giving off vapours. So there are some things in this garden that I have to ingest mm -hmm. to harm me. This one is accidental, I'd have to brush past it. Yes. Is there anything we should be actually scared of just walking by? Well, there's a plant further down the garden called henbane. We think this plant is responsible for a lot of people fainting at this point of the tour. It produces these flowers about the size of a 50 pence piece, yeah. which are cream in colour. And we think that it's that that gives off a very pungent scent. And so people will start to feel very faint at this point. And so we have a bench uh, against the wall. We have first aiders always on hand yeah. who will come out with water and revive you. But normally we will get perhaps three faintings a week. And only last week we had three in one day. What? Three in one day. Yeah. You're telling me not to like, oh, and now I know this, I, I, <laughs> I think I feel funny. But maybe that's just because like psychologically you're telling me that I could faint. Yeah, we better go and sit down on the bench then. Okay. <laughs> First <Ooh>. aid. <laughs> At first glance, this garden seemed fairly innocent, but having had Trevor talk me through just a few of these extremely deadly plants, I am happy to stay well clear. Um, if you've enjoyed this morbid botanical tour, then do let us know in the comments below. Subscribe to Earth Unplugged and we'll see you soon.